Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Court Bombs with me C. Waddy here in Farm Simulator 22. It is the start of September, okay? We have finished August, I finished with the field that we harvested, got the bales collected and sold. So, today is the first real month on the map and because of that we need to go and get some kit from the store because before we can really do anything we need to do some soil sampling because I've got the precision farming mod installed and activated we need to get soil maps of our field so the way to do that oh if I get on the right side of the road the correct side of the road sorry um uh, is to get a, a little tool, a little tool called a scout, which you take soil samples with and um, you send away for analysis and they come back and they tell you exactly what type of soil you've got on your fields. The reason for this is different, with precision farming installed in the game, different soil types have an effect on your crops, on your yields, on your growth, how much fertilizer you need to use, that sort of thing. So before we start doing absolutely anything on the fields in terms of preparing them for the next season, we really need to get our fields sampled. So we know what we're dealing with. Um, because using the having that knowledge, it can actually save us and make us a little bit more efficient because with the correct knowledge of soil types we can actually change how much seed we use on fields um, because obviously soil that gives you know that's really fertile and gives a you know a real like boost to the crops you don't need so much seed to get the uh, you know a yield so you can actually save on seed usage um, in other areas obviously where the soil is less good you need to apply more seed to get the same amount of yield. And that will be controlled by the um, the, uh, the, the the seeders. And we're going to need some crop sensors on some of our vehicles. Okay. Um, as well. We're going to have to retrofit some of our equipment with some sensors to help us be able to measure and um, apply things correctly. Uh, I do, however, believe I have arrived at the store a little bit too early in the daytime on this map. <laughs> I believe the store does not open till 9am currently. There is an update in the works coming from Oxygen David, and I do believe that when that update drops and we update, um, we're going to be able to... Uh, access the store from 8 a.m. Now, apparently there is another way in. You can, yeah, you can come in the back way. Right. <laughs> I'm only going to do this the once. Normally, I would use the gate, but I want to get started. So, unfortunately, Mr. Shopman, I'm coming in the back door. I'm coming in the rear entrance, as they say. Um, no jokes about that in chat, please. Hello, there's a nice truck there. It's a shame trucks like that are not in the game, really. You know, as much as I, I you know, I, I love giants and I love what giants do and everything. Um, with farm sim, all the trucks in this game tend to be pretty sort of, I would say, Americanish. Is it open? Yes, it is. Excellent. Right. Here's what I require from you. I need to come down to miscellaneous. Um, we need to come along here. Oh, we've got all the Guns and Roses DLC enabled as well, haven't we? Right. The Isaria Scout of Precision Farming DLC. That is $17,000. That's what we need. If we're going to survey fields ourselves, 
you there is an option where you can actually pay for like the AI to come and um, effectively um, scout your fields for you. However, I'm as this series is going to be aimed at maybe beginner players, like I say, the players of all levels of farm sim, whether you're starting out, um, whether you're somewhat experienced, whether you're maybe a returning player who hasn't played for a couple of games, you know, or you've had a bit of a break from the series. I'm going to show you more or less how things work. Right, it's 8 a.m. The workshop is open. Uh, you know what? Whilst I'm here, I will show you what we need to do with this here tractor. In fact, there's a couple of things I would like to do with this tractor whilst I'm here. So, bring it up onto the ramp. Oh. Right, I want to customise the tractor. Wheel setup standard. Yes, we're going to have... You notice on the wing mirrors, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the wing mirrors, ladies and gentlemen, of the tractor. I can put this in a position where you can actually see it better. When I turn this on, we get these lovely little things called sensors. Which allow us to see the nitrogen level of crops as we are driving across the field. Very useful when we're doing fertilising, when we're doing, you know any kind of application with the um, this tractor. So if we're doing manure, slurry, fertilizer, we make sure we apply the right amount of stuff. I'm also going to add GPS whilst we've got this on here. Okay. And I'm going to buy that. It's 24 grand. I see I'm eating through my money very quickly at this. Oh, no. That was not a good idea. Um, my weight has fell off. Um, can I please have my front weight back? <laughs> Immersion broken. front weight that's the only thing i don't like i must admit about the um um the workshop when you reconfigure a vehicle it detaches everything it breaks everything um, which is a bit of a pain right we have our scout tool so let's go back to the store and let's make sure make bet back to the farm have i got uh, you know what i can do this with the auto drive i can let auto drive drive us back to the farm because what i need to do is explain to you what's going to happen when we get there so if we come down to our lovely little farm okay right now you can't really see much doesn't really show you a lot does it you've seen this map before um as your normal map okay what we're going to do is come down a menu. This is now the precision farming menu that only appears in game when you have the precision farming uh, mod installed. Now, right now, uh, doesn't show anything for soil information because we've not sampled anything. But what we're going to do, we're going to go round and we're going to sample our fields. Um, we're down here, aren't we? This is our farm. So we've got to sample 54, 53, 56, 57, more or less, to get the soil information. So we will do that when we get back to the farm. Okay, we'll then have soil information, which will give us our um, pH value. This is your lime. It tells you how much lime you've got on a field. Okay. And obviously knowing that will help us to make sure we apply the correct amount of lime for the soil type. We've then got nitrogen, um, which is your fertilizer. So again, we'll know how much fertilizer is in the soil, which is very useful because when we plant crops, each crop now in the game with precision farming uses different amounts of, has different nitrogen requirements to help it grow. Some crops don't use nitrogen. 
okay but actually increase the nitrogen value of the field so those crops you do not want to fertilize and you don't want to over fertilize because it's a complete waste of time so you need to be sort of monitoring that we've also then got yield okay now we have got some yield information because obviously we've just done a harvest of field 56 this year and obviously as you can see the yield was pretty crap <laughs> denoted by this sort of orangey reddy color if you're colorblind we are at the 50 55 60 percent level at the top of the scale what we're aiming for is to get down to the bottom of the scale into the greens area Again, we're aiming for the 115, 120, 125 percent marker. OK, and again, I appreciate if you're colour blind, you can't see the greens. So it will probably be a varying, varying shade of blue or grey for you guys that play with the colour blind mode on. Um, and then we've got seed rate. OK, so again, once we know what type of soil we have on our fields, we know exactly how much seed we need to put on each piece of soil so again certain crops prefer and enjoy certain um certain crop uh certain soil types and will flourish better in certain soil types so they require less seed and less fertilizer and this is where it's all going to help out and then we've got we're back at the beginning soil types but now we've got our environmental score now, what the environmental score does, and this is the only part of precision farming I'm not a particularly big fan of, because basically this applies a bonus to um, payouts. So when you're selling crops, when you're selling bales, when you're selling stuff, you get a bonus depending on how good your environmental score is. You also lose, you get penalized if your environmental score is bad. Now, how is the environmental score calculated? Well, it's calculated based on how well you're controlling the nitrogen on your field, how well you're controlling the pH value, the lime, how well you're controlling weeds. And in this, in precision farming, that tends to be done with herbicide spraying. Despite the fact that in the base game of Farming Simulator, Using herbicide actually gives you a penalty, causes a penalty um, for you. And you're actually encouraged to use hoes and weeders to remove weeds. In um, precision farming, it's the other way around. But it only help, counts if you use a weed uh, sprayer that has the spr spot spraying technology on it. Now, what that is, is a, basically it's a, it's a, a sprayer has little cameras along it which are looking for and which are aimed at the train and as you're driving along it's it's monitoring the ground and the crop passing underneath it and as soon as it sees a weed it triggers the sprayer to spray so it only sprays where it sees weeds it doesn't spray the whole field doesn't cover the whole ground it only sprays where it's seeing the um the weeds okay now soil sampling obviously we have to do the soil sampling first but soil information does actually decline over time and will eventually become outdated which means you then have to go around and sample the fields again okay so you need to make sure you keep that up and tillage now tillage is basically where after you have finished harvesting a field, you reseed it. If you, however, do things like plowing or do things like cultivating, that will bring that score down because basically you're damaging the ground, you're damaging the soil by plowing, by cultivating. You're also obviously driving around on the field more times than you need to, which means you're generating carbon emissions from your vehicles, your diesel emissions, that sort of thing you're harming the environment so basically precision farming encourages you to direct drill or direct seed um after harvesting um so again if you can get all those scores up your environmental score goes up you get a better bonus when you're selling stuff you get a better payout when you're selling stuff 
The problem with that is, and this is just my personal opinion, um, it means that basically you do things in the game with precision farming that don't really go along hand in hand with what real farmers are doing. You're chasing numbers. You're more concerned with numbers and chasing numbers than you are actually just farming. <laughs> but you'll see that when we get there. Right, this guy has made it back to the farm. I think, has he? Is this my farm? Looks like my farm. Uh, could be my farm. Let's go and find out. I don't know where I am now. But anyway, we're back here. Um, where is he? Where are we? I don't know where I am. I'm somewhere. Uh, this uh, doesn't look like my farm, ladies and gents. This does not look like my farm. Um, I believe I am down there. I do not want to be down here. I want to be at my farm. Let's go back to my farm. Need to check that with um, auto drive. I need to make sure all my vehicles have the main farm set. I need to have a main farm waiting point or a loading point or something created that I can send vehicles back to that I know. I don't want to go rooting through all the folders that auto drive guy has done <laughs> for, for this configuration. I'm going to have to set just something that I can find very quickly and easily. And... Um, when I'm sending drivers to and to to the farm, back to the farm from anywhere on the map. So actually, what we'll do, we'll do that as we go into the farm. Uh, we'll create a little loading point somewhere. Because obviously, we come in here down this path, and what we can do on one of these points. Yeah. Probably one of these. Might pick this one. Right. I'm going to create a pot. there so now when i go in here if i go up to if i delete that one so i don't need the debug if i go up to default there main farm entrance is now my selected go to right we are back at the main farm then right so we need to uh we need soil sample 57 we need to spot soil sample field 56 we need to do 53 we can do 54 even though it's a grass field and it's not really going to make a diff much of an impact but that is what we shall do so drive through the farm and i you'll notice i've installed the um the mud system mod i have i have installed the mud system mod because it works on this map so if it's rained the tracks get quite muddy from, GT, from GTX. You might see vehicles getting stuck, actually. Right, so here we are at the field, ladies and gentlemen. So first thing I'm going to do 
Uh, it's going to turn on my GPS. I'm going to raise my lines up a bit higher. Right, I'm going to do A plus heading because I want to do 90 degree. And I think we want probably 30 meters. Right, next thing we need to do, we need to unfold our lovely little scouting tool. Okay, if I open up the help window, you'll be able to see this a lot better. Okay. Drive onto the field. We now have lower soil sampling unit. Okay. And then we take a soil sample. And what we're doing, as you can see, we are soil sampling. Now, what you'll notice on the minimap, which you can't now see because my webcam will be in the way, is we have a green dot on the map. Okay. Which shows you the area that we are currently soil sampling. So what I need to do is I need to drive to another area of the map. Of the field. And I need to take another sample. So I'm going to take a sample. Okay. check that I've got all this field covered. All this bit. Looks like it, but I'll just take another one here anyway. Yes, mod. Right, we are in a soil sample again. Get okay, a screenshot for the thumbnail. And I'm just going to take them at opposite ends of the field. Or at least where I can't see where I've been doing my... Look, here you can see where I've sampled currently. Okay. Looks like I need to do a bit in the middle of the field. Right, we need to get about, I think it's going to be about, that should about finish off that little bit. I need to go and do a bit more at the bottom of the field lot, where I've missed a bit. I've also, naturally, because this takes a sample in a, in a radius, in a circle, uh, around the vehicle, it does catch other fields as well, which is not a bad thing. It saves you a bit of time having to go around and get all the fields, but yeah. There's a little area over here that I missed. Just a little one. Where I didn't quite get the overlap. So if I take a sample here. That one is done as well. Okay. Uh, we now need to go into field 53, which is up here. So what I would generally suggest when you're doing your soil samples, right, of your fields, 
I would generally recommend getting as close to the edge of the field as you can. Start at an, at an edge, like, because you'll cover most of the field then as you go round, and then you just have to fill in the middle bit. So if I come over to here, and I do, like, right in this corner, you'll see I cover most of that side of the field in a second. There you go. Plus, I get a little bit of 61. 62 as well, which although aren't my fields, it does still help later on. Oh, let's take a sample here. Coming away from the edge of the field a little bit. But we just keep taking soil samples, work our way around the fields. This gives us all the information. We send these away then, and we'll get some uh, some soil information, which we can then use. Obviously, these fields then probably all, all are going to require me to plow them. Same as on any farm sim game when you first start out on the map. They all require plowing. Um... And that's quite good. You can probably see I'm going to get bogged down in the field, aren't I? With the mud system. Take that one there. So yeah, rain is falling. And that's going to make things very wet with this new mod. This mud system mod. So it's the first time I've used the mud system mod. Um, so we see how that goes. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be too infuriating. Right. There's a little bit over here that I need to sample. And then I need to go back and do the middle bit on field 56 there. This bit here. Uh, we've got quite a bit of field 54 done whilst we're over here. So yeah, it's just a case of going around. Make sure you get all of your field sample. We'll send the samples away. sample there. That will get all that area. Uh, we then need to go do back to do field uh, 57. But basically, once we've done that, what we do then is we send the soil samples, send the soil samples for analysis. So that is for me left bumper and Y on my controller. Soil samples are now sent to the laboratory for analysis. You will see the results of the soil types map soon. Okay. So it takes a little while <coughs> for that information to come back. Um, and when it does, we'll actually have some soil. Oh, see there, it's just popped into popped into view that cost me 1,800 my tractors are sinking in the field a little bit look 
requiring a lot more power to drive through this wet soil. But yeah, if we go and have a look in the mini-map in a second. Right. Collect some more samples. So if you go to the soil sam information screen, you can now see we have soil information. For some of our fields. We have got some loam on 57. We've got sandy loam. We've got loamy sand. Now, how this works, loamy sand and sandy loam are the most fertile soil types and will give you the best uh, yields and best harvests and best crop growth. Loam and silty clay are not very good. So you don't want to see grey and black soil on your soil mats. You want to see yellow and green. So it looks like... We're doing okay on that front. We've got plenty of uh, yellow and green on our map. So I'm just going to take more samples on this field. Like I say, with this information, once we're on with this information, that will be good. And like I say, it, this information lasts for a couple of seasons. Um, before it goes out of date and then you have to repeat this sampling process again um, on, your, on, your, on your fields. Um, so sometimes, depending obviously on the type of player that you are, you might decide that having uh, the scout is not very useful. It might just be quicker if you've only got a couple of fields to call in the, um, the AI worker come and survey the field for you and to do that if you want to know how you do that you come into the map da, 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 da. you can select the field and you can purchase the soil information directly from this screen okay same you just click the field same as if you were buying it in the other map screen okay and basically you will pay a, a fee. You'll pay a slightly higher fee, obviously, because you're asking for basically somebody to come from the laboratory to your field to do the sampling for you. But it, you might decide that that's better than spending however much money it costs on the scout. And if you've got lots of fields, it might work out better for you to do the scouting, like I'm doing. It got, might also get to the point in a save where once you have enough cash, <laughs> you don't really, you're not really that fussed about the sampling. So you'll be like, you know what? I'm just going to buy the information that I need. I'm just going to buy the information. And um, yeah. Then you can sell this, trade it back in. But I like it because, again, it gives me something to do. And it's always nice to have jobs to do in-game to pass your time. Especially if you're playing with days and seasons and things like that. You don't really want to be inactive. You always want to have something you can be getting on with. Saying so morning is cool. So I'm just going around the edge of the field, making sure I get all the edges done. Especially all the corners. It's very easy to miss corners on it with this thing. Because obviously it's a round tool and a lot of fields on a lot of maps are square. Which doesn't make great for scouting. I think I've got a little bit over here that I've not scouted. Yeah, but as you can see, we've got most of this field done. We've encroached into some of the AI farmers fields, but that's never a bad thing. Because again, being armed with information, if we ever go to their fields to do fertilizing jobs and stuff, 
he can uh, use that soil info. But normally, you wouldn't be able to just drive on. You can't drive on their fields and probe. So you can't just drive all over the map and think to yourself, right, I'm going to probe all the fields so I know all the soil information on the map. It doesn't work like that. You're not allowed to probe on their land. Same as you're not allowed to work on their land unless you're doing a contract. Right, sample again. And we have covered all of that field. The only one left to do is field 54, which is the uh, grass field. So we'll go and have a look. I don't think I need to do particularly too much over there. But we are getting really, really bogged down now. Probably turn the GPS GPS off now. Uh, right, I am over here. We need to go back through the far. Now is it this, I think it's this way to field 54. Still learning and working my way around the map. Um... Yeah. There we go. Right. We are cooking. Again, wet gate, egg gate with the uh, mud system mod. Gate, gate entries get quite, um, right, we're going to sample there. this whole thing. sampling we'll get around this very quickly and then in the next video of the series we will be able to take this information and put it to use stop putting it to good use that's in there Sample. So we've got 17 samples at the minute in our little uh, scout, in our little sampler. Which is pretty cool.
asked me to take a sample here. Right, now we should just be able to go looking at the field map into the middle of the field. That's it. I don't know if that's going to get it all. Or whether I need to set just one more, I think. Oh, no. Just to be on the safe side, I'll take one more. Then we'll send these off for analysis. Right. And that's our scout tool finished with. We don't need that anymore. We have got good soil sampled. Like I say, we'll get the results back very shortly. Let's put some lights on. Remembering, of course, to close my gates. The important gates. I'm not going to bother with that closing that one because it just leads into a storage area. <laughs> what we need to do now is find somewhere park this. Probably wants to be kept in this shed where we've got our plough lot. Which I can guarantee you, we'll probably be using in the next episode. So it's probably a good job that I'm here. Right. Disconnected. Right, we'll just turn that off for a second then. And we'll just have a look and summarise what we've done today. Right. There we are. We've got our soil samples. We can see that we have fairly decent soil. A little bit of the grey creeping in down here, but that's not a big problem. Uh, I mean, that's a grass field, so it's not going to affect the grass that much. We'll affect yield a little bit on this field, but we've got plenty of good yellow and green stuff. This field's got quite a nice mixture. So, yeah, looking good. Right, soil information. Now, if we look at the line, uh, fields are looking okay for lime at the minute, so we might not need to do any lime application this year. I might lit run with that. Um, so we won't do any lime spreading. Nitrogen is obviously very bad. We're going to have to sort that out once we get some crops in the ground. And what we're going to do, we're going to raise the nitrogen values up to whatever crops we put on, choose to put on the fields. And obviously, we should hopefully find better yield, better yield next season. But obviously, we're going to need to decide what it is we are going to be planting. Now, it looks like we can do wheat, barley, canola, and oats. We can also do linseed, rye, and we can do alfalfa. Hmm. So. Well, we know canola's very profitable, but that's not going to be ready till next year. Uh, what about rye? How is the price of rye on this map? Bearing in mind, I've got loads of mods installed. Uh, $494. We are playing, of course, on hard difficulty as well. Um, hard economy, I think. Or we might be not. I can't remember. So 494 for... Uh, oats is worth more than rye. Canola is worth a lot more than rye. Rye and barley are about the same. Wheat's a little bit better than rye. So, I'm probably not going to be harvesting rye, planting rye this year. I think we're probably going to be going down the road of oats, canola... And possibly barley, I think. And wheat. Wheat again. On a field. 
Um, so that is where we're at, ladies and gents. Obviously, what I need to do now, however, is go back to the original map app. We need to go through and have a look at where we're at with things. And as we can see, 57, 56 need plowing. Our grass field needs plowing, but I'm not going to. I am going to plow field 53 because it's got it's got uh, weeds on it. And I can also see some stones there. I can also see some stones. And I'm going to kind of want to get rid of those. I am. Um, so that's what we're doing in the next video, ladies and gents. We're going to be plowing. But for now, from me, see Waddy, we've reached the end of today's episode. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. I will see you next time round. But for now from me, cheerio, goodbye.